I'm appreciative of the way you talk about mentors. I believe that as well. Um, I believe that also that we don't say the names of enough of our heroes of our lives. Um, and I'm just wondering if in your discussions about your mentors, if you could tell us a story about one of them and maybe say their name and tell us the significance of what they did for you in your journey. Very good. Um, and these would be later, later in life, um, when sitting directly in front of me. Um, Ms. Kendra and I first met each other in 2003 here in Indianapolis when I was asked to judge the Indian Caucus Feldman Contest as a category. Um, Ms. Kendra was a judge on the panel. We instantly had this connection. Um, that bond has spoken pretty true over the years, even at 3 o'clock in the morning. It really has. Um, God was lecturing me as part of my mother family in Detroit. Um, she's taught me some things over the years that um, sometimes you just have to sit back and think. You go, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, I would say that Diamond Jim Brown um, is another one. Uh, the funny thing about Diamond Jim Brown and myself is he was um, he was Mr. Leather, Michigan in 1993. I'm sorry, 1983, and I was Mr. Butler, Michigan in 2003. Um, so there was a 20 year difference, and there's just so many ironic things about Jim and myself that were really kind of the kinship there. And I was sitting at the bar one day, and he looked at me, and I'll never forget this, and I'm here to admit it today. He said, Better be careful. One day you're going to be one of the rubbers. It's true. It's true. More questions? Yes. So I appreciate your uh, words and support to our community. And we often see that our community is kind of disappearing. We don't see as many people coming out in leather. So we're trying to promote that community again. So as you being a uh, counselor and mentor, how would you suggest to us that we try to bring more people into our community um, and get more people together? Because there is nothing stronger than the bond of leather men and women together. I don't have I, I don't have the answer. I don't I don't even have to be perfectly honest with you, I don't have even a remote suggestion. Because I have been Sad by the the disappearance, and it doesn't make me. It's not that I want to shy away from getting the the forces back together. It, 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 it it's not that I shy away from it. I, I just wish I had the ultimate magic answer, and, and I don't. And it, it, it frustrates me personally. That's why I can't share it with you, because I don't have this, I don't have a strong enough suggestion. I think that every effort that is being made in every community has great merit. I just don't know what the common thread bond across the entire other community is to, to solidify it. I just don't know where it is. And um, it's tough. It's very tough. More questions? Yes. Hi. Hi. So I've been to a couple of the life events back in the day and Diamond Gyms. So I'm very familiar. I know that I'm a 12 year old, but I assure you I'm old enough to have been there. <laughs> um, so my question has to do with education, because I'm really big into education. What do you feel would be, now, the most important things to be getting out into the community and educating some of these newer people? The most important topic? The most important topics, or or perhaps like the overall feel, like what would you like to see being educated about, or what kind of history would you like passed on? 
the preservation of the leather history and where it, where it is today, where it has come from, and where it will go in the future. But the preserving it is probably the most important thing that I can think of. Um, and it comes with the mentoring, and it comes with the elders, and it comes with making those voices be heard. And, and there's a realness to what this really happened. It's not. It's not something you read on the internet. It's not something you read in a, in, in a bar rag, okay? These are real life things that happen and where we have come from and, and where our roots began. And, and, and I don't know, it, it, it's so hard to, to get that into up here, to translate it from here to here to there. Um, it, it's tough when you I don't want to say generations, but it is generational. And uh, this was brought to brought to my light in a different aspect of my retail career. I didn't know that any born born between nineteen whatever and nineteen whatever is now called a millennial. <laughs> the hell's a millennial? <laughs> I don't know, but it was, we actually had to have an HR course on this, that there are different degrees of generations, and this is what they're called, and this is what they're about, and, and it, it made me stop and think, this just happened like six months ago, so it made me stop and think even then, there's multi-generations of leather community, and, and I don't, you know, where do you, where do you get that, that line of where I can understand what you're saying, you're not, you're old enough to be my grandfather, but you're not old enough to not be my friend and my, my kind of So, I mean, just, but preserving that and making sure that it is available for those that are just starting out and want to become involved in what do I learn or what do I, what do I need to tap myself into? Those are, those are the things. I've got another question over there. You would get leathers and other pieces of clothing as part of leatherosity from estate sales and different places like that. In a very real way, you were carrying people's stories. Did you ever learn the story of any of the pieces that you inherited or discovered? <coughs> Did we ever have merchandise that was inherited? And not that we are aware of. Um, I would. I think that we're pretty careful with um, <coughs> ownership um, and, and those that were that might have been gifted. If if we knew that if, if, if they were gifted to somebody else or inherited, um, we did not know that. Um, I, I boy, do you know what I pretty much I, I I have to honestly say that I don't think we ever owned a piece of leather in the store for resale that was inherited or gifted. Because that would hold a special place and we would try to, if that were to happen, I think that deep down in our hearts what we're made of, we would have made sure that that would have gone to the right woman. Oh, but this is coming from you? I mean, Kendra, I'm just saying it. Ah. <laughs> Ms. Kendra would like to know <laughs> what the hottest thing is or was that you have done? Oh. <laughs> her voice, she lost her voice. I didn't hear her. What did she ask? <laughs> she can whisper it into the microphone if you'd like. No, I'm trying to repeat it. I don't hear What is the hottest thing you've done? Sexually? <laughs> really? Should we ask Gina? Um, Hey, boy, do you know what you come from? The hottest thing. Um, would you accept the answer? I haven't gotten to it yet. To rate it, it's all good, baby. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I can't answer. We've got time for about, we've got time for about one more. I have a couple of different experiences, one in the R&R, &R, when we found that there was a closet in the basement that was not. I think it was an old bathroom, maybe. But all of a sudden, there was more than you know, Sir Shane and myself there at the same time. And then there was also the time when I was first being introduced to his lifestyle that um, we ended up at a, a guy's house that um, I had my first demo with fisting, and, and I was assisting. And we were down the basement of this guy's house, and it was very hot to watch as uh, Sir Shane went through the process of having this guy enjoy being fisted at that time. So those were two times that keep in the memory of myself, so. <laughs> I'm not afraid to talk about it. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone for being here for the fireside chat this evening. I hope it was enjoyable. We had to make a few changes, but I, I hope okay. you enjoyed it. And happy GLLA, and again, Ms. Kendra, my thanks.